Ready, everybody? Uh, there is historic truth un un unrelated to your destiny. There is vital truth leading and guiding your destiny. We are dealing with vital truth that determines your destiny. We have been studying from the textbook, The Gifts and Ministries, that the Holy Spirit brings to the living church. And we have been with it so long, my book is dog-eared. Why don't we say cat-eared? Anyway, something-eared. And uh, we have gotten to page 92 in your teaching syllabus. And we have moved from the phenomenal gifts of the Spirit into another dimension, and that has to do with the gifts of persons to the church, where God does not just give a gift into your own spirit. He gives you a gift of a personality into the church. There are nine ministries in the church of Jesus Christ placed there by the omniscience of the blessed Holy Spirit. Uh, they are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, and also in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 41. They are apostles, a person given to the church as a gift to the church. And they are prophets, a person, uh, not a blessing, but a person given as a gift to the church. And they are pastors, a God's gift to the church. Uh, some denominations vote in pastors. <laughs> it's an absurdity. How can little sheep vote on a shepherd? They don't know enough. They don't even know the way to the watering hole. And they have no ability. That's the reason you have churches in such great, great turmoil is because the sheep are bad, 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 and pastors around. And uh, it's an impossibility as far as God is concerned. God puts a man to feed his sheep. And then we, we, we have evangelists, gatherers, gatherers of immortal souls into the body of Christ. Some of them don't understand that. They gather them into nothing. All they do is take up their offerings and leave town, and the little sheep go wandering from street to street looking for some grass. Some of them never do find it. And then we have, we have those teachers. Uh, this doesn't mean that you have a PhD. It, 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 only, it only means that God, <laughs> in His sovereign might, gives you the ability to take a scripture and fragment it and put it back together again. And tell us what it means, you see. That it is a, a gift from God into a person. There was a man like Smith Wigglesworth uh, who was almost illiterate, and yet he could teach the Word in a most remarkable manner because the Holy Ghost had anointed him to teach the Word of God. And so this teaching is just a little different uh, from what you would think a person has been trained in a university to do. It is a God-given ministry only in biblical affairs, not, 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 not teaching you finance or, or industry or something of that nature. And, uh, and then we have elders and bishops. They, they are the same. An elder and a bishop, they are under a pastor. They are lower than a pastor. And they are not one of the five cardinal gifts of people into the church. They are, they are body people that are appointed. They are appointed by men and not appointed by God. So when a person calls himself a bishop, it means that he is underneath a pastor to do what the pastor tells him to do and to obey the pastorship or he can remove his bishopric from him because he is not one of the five ministries given by the Holy Ghost to the church. So any person who calls himself a bishop has brought himself down into the layman's community, which is his privilege if he wants to stay down there. And then elders, 
they are the same. Now there are churches ruled by elders. Paul told Timothy, go and set elders in certain churches. This certainly meant that when, 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 when Timothy got there, he was above them because he was a God's gift to the church that I think you could class as an apostle in his later ministry. I'm sure that you could. And then we have deacons and we have helps and we have governments. We'll hope to get to all nine of these. There are nine gifts of the Spirit and there are nine of these personalities that can be placed into the body of Christ to build the body. Say build the body. They're, 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 they're not, they're not to, to exalt themselves and, and they're not to show how wonderful they are. Uh, they are to coordinate and guide and bless and feed the body of Christ. They are for, they are part of the body and they're for the body. And when they satellite on their own up there, uh, then they are not in the body. They have to come on down here uh, with the rest of us. Now, we'd like to read to you Ephesians 4, 11. That, that Jesus gave some apostles and he gave some prophets and he gave some evangelists and he gave some pastors and he gave some t teachers. Uh, it, it says here that the Lord Jesus Christ with the anointing of the Holy Spirit gave, took a person and made him something else. He made him a pastor. He made him an evangelist. He made him a prophet. That he was made that way by the sovereign anointing of God himself. Then in 1 Corinthians 12 and 28, it says, God has set some in the church. He has set first apostles. That means apostle is the number one minister of the total church of the Lord Jesus Christ. An apostle is. And he is made secondarily, don't miss the word of God, a, a prophet is not as great as an apostle. An apostle is a person <clears throat> who has all the ministries, all five of the ministries. He is the top person in the ministries. Uh, he can pastor, uh, and, and he can go to a foreign country and raise up a church. Uh, uh, he can teach. He is an evangelist. And so he is the totality of the ministry, an apostle is. And he can function anywhere in the, in, in the, in the entire ministry. A prophet, of course, cannot do that. And teachers, and then after that, miracles, gifts of healing, then you have helps and governments. Helps and governments. We will we will, we will be very delighted to get to those to those functions. Now these are persons, men and women. If you got your textbook open, it's point number one. Uh, these are men and women given to the body of Christ, to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that they might minister to others. <laughs> these these are not gifts that you use on yourself. Uh, these are gifts that you distribute your blessings to those around about you. The apostle is the key, is the key. We, 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 we need to make uh, a strong difference here. I, I, have, uh, I have ministered in more than 110 nations of the world. I'm a unique person for the simple reason I am the last one that knew the, the great pioneers of the full gospel movement that began in the first part of this century. Because in 1934, I left San Francisco and, and went through the whole known world and all these men and women who were the founders of the full gospel faith, who were the pioneers of this blessing. I knew them personally. I stayed in their homes and I preached with them. And, and there is no such person living today there's there are those that know the people in their community or the people of their, even their country. Uh, but when I go to Sweden, I have to teach them about their pioneers because there's nobody there that's, that has seen them but me. Uh, I, I was there and preached in their pioneers church in 1936 and 37, and the rest of the bunch weren't alive yet. And I, I tell them, I said, I'm sorry to have to inform you. Most of you were born since 1936. And since I preached here in 1936, I got here before you did. Therefore, I am more Swedish than you are, and I have priorities, and you better believe it. When I met the Dalai Lama of Tibet, 
and we talked together for two hours. I, I said, what year were you born? He said, I was born in 1935. I said, uh, 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 you were born in 1935. I said, what month were you born? Uh, he, he said, in August. I said, the month that you were born, I was preaching all over Tibet before you got there. He says, I bow to you, sir. And for two hours, he was my servant. He even gave me his prayer shawl that I still have. I've never heard of a monk giving away his prayer shawl. But he took the prayer shawl from around his neck that he used in his worship. I've never even pressed it yet. I can show it to you. It, it, all the wrinkles of the Dalai Lama are still Dalai in, in the Yama. And, and so, uh, well, anyway, it's interesting to be alive. Can you say amen? amen? The key to all the ministries is the apostle. And, and it is so exciting uh, to know that there are those living today. How many believe that? Amen. There are apostles living today amen. that could do anything Peter, James, or Paul, and the rest of them could do. And, and this means that he is the first person. And any person who has an apostolic ministry can go he can raise up a church. That's the way you identify one. When a man says, I'm an apostle, he says, how many churches have you raised up? None. Then you must be an evangelist. <laughs> He's sure God, not an apostle. Because an apostle is one who originates. Paul says he laid the foundation and he didn't put it on top of somebody else's foundation. It was his own foundation that he, that he was building upon. An apostle always builds on his own foundation. Uh, he is the first. Any person who has an apostolic ministry, uh, he can raise up his own church. He can be the founder of it. He can remain. He can pastor that church because he is a shepherd. He has ability to teach the people. Uh, he has a combination of all the ministries that the Holy Ghost has placed within the body. Now, in my experience, what I was going to get to a few moments ago, in my experience, a person who calls himself an apostle, you can just believe he's not one. Did you ever hear of a banana, a banana tree waving its leaves and says, look on me, I'm a banana tree, I'm a banana tree, yeah, look at me. You don't have to, he produces bananas. Are you here or not? Look for the fruit not for some yakety yak some guy sputing out. I've never seen an apostle yet that was proud of it. Smith Wigglesworth was an apostle. If you'd have called him an apostle, he might have slapped you upside the head for being so stupid. You say, why? You didn't have to look at him. You had to look at his fruit. All over the face of this earth was the fruit scattered in many nations, showing what he was. You don't have to say what you are. You are what you are by the grace of God and not your own achievements. And so therefore you don't have to boast. You don't have to discuss it. You don't have to talk about it. The apostle knows how to set deacons in a church, how to put elders in a church, how to put helps in a church, how to put governments in a church. And, and so he knows how to cause the body of Christ to function properly and beautifully. Now, the only reason we're teaching about these is the great need. There is so much funny stuff in some of these preachers today trying to claim something, and it's all through a pride in their hearts that they're trying to be something that they're not. And, and, and so uh, what we have to do is a person says, you know, I'm not even sure I'm a pastor. Oh, I preach here on Sunday mornings. You say, why aren't you sure you're a pastor? Well, all I could have you do is come look at all these folks here and let you decide whether I'm a pastor or not. Amen. They're here. We have the largest congregation in the Protestant congregation in the city. And, and I let you look at the fruit and then let you decide what I am. I'm not sure I'm an evangelist. You said, but you win a lot of souls. Yeah, possibly so. But I let you decide that. You look at the fruit. Fruit never looks upon fruit. Bananas don't all day long look on, look on bananas, you know? 
They just grow bananas and keep their mouths shut. Now, when you've got the anointing of God upon you, that's what you'll do. Braggarts don't ever have much. Okay, it's hard to get anything out of you bunch. Oh, turn to page 93. There, there, are, two, there are also combinations of ministers. Now, this is, this is so important. For, for example, Stephen, he was chosen by, 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 the, by the apostles and the church to be a deacon. You say, why in the world did they choose him to be a deacon? Because he was doing everything in the church. Every time you turned around, there was Stephen, whistling and singing and working. And, and it was so exciting that when they needed somebody to wait on the tables, they says, this guy that you see every time you turn around, let's make him one. Sometimes great people like the Apostle Peter can miss your calling because your calling doesn't come from man. Your calling comes from God. And man might miss your calling. They might call you something that God hasn't called you. Or they might put you a lot lower than God has put you. You keep your directions up and down. This way, you know, not vertical, always horizontal. They chose him to be a deacon, but the Bible says he began to do mighty wonders and a teacher of the word. Acts 6 and 5, the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, we never heard of him anymore, and, and Nica, Nicanor, with that kind of name, we might as well forget him, and Timon, and, and Parmeas, I'd forget him too, and Nicholas, a proselyte, I don't know how he made it, of Antioch. And those are the ones they chose to be deacons in the church. And then in verse 8, it says, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. He went right straight up over what man had chosen him to be to what God had chosen him to be. He became an apostle. He began to do great wonders. I'm in the middle of page 93 if you're looking for it. Acts 6 and 8. Among the people. And then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the uh, Libertines. We still got those guys around today. And the Cyrenians and the Alexandrians and of them of Cilicia and of Asia. <clears throat> they, they were just as confused geographically as we are today. I came from here and you came from there and you came from somewhere else. No matter where you came from, it's what you got now. Okay. And they were not able to resist uh-huh. The wisdom and the spirit by which this man, <coughs> Stephen, spoke. It didn't matter who they were. He had something they didn't have. He had power, anointing, and authority. They did not have it. And they could not stand up against him. So uh, the apostles and all their, <laughs> and, and all their goodwill, uh, he did not serve tables uh, he was out there healing the sick, casting out devils, changing, changing people by the multitudes. Great, mighty wonders were taking place. And, his, and there's Philip, the next man they chose. In Acts chapter 6, verse 5, and the saying pleased the whole multitude. <clears throat> when it pleases the whole multitude, you might know it's wrong. Uh, they never have been right. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and so forth, all those names. And when they sat before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Then Philip, now, that's where God changed the program again. Philip, he went down to Samaria. I'd call it up to Samaria, seeing it's north. And he preached Christ unto those people. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those sayings which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken by palsies and, and that were healed, that were lame, that were lame and they were healed. And, and there was great joy in that city. Let's all say that together. There was great joy in that city. Say it again. There was great joy in that city. 
a deacon didn't bring it either. He was just a deacon because they called him to be one. God called him an evangelist and he shook a whole city and bringing with him tremendous anointings of God that healed the lame, that healed the sick, cast out devils. He was a mighty, a mighty man of God. Now that's the reason why <coughs> it's dangerous to use titles. Like I tell my people in the church, you know, there's just one thing I'm sure of. <coughs> I am Brother Sumrall. I, I know for sure I'm your brother. There's no doubt about that. I'm your brother. But if you're going to call me something else with these five titles, then I'm not so sure because that's between me and God and not between you and me. Because God is the giver of spiritual gifts, not to be boasted over, but to bless the body of Christ. Isn't it nicer to be humble about a whole thing? Yeah, it's just a whole lot nicer to be uh, humble about it. Uh, now, the big thing is number three. Look at the bottom. There are combinations of these ministers that God gives to the church. There are men who are teachers. <coughs> I mean, I, I mean, I mean, they're, they, they teach in Bible colleges and they teach in colleges, universities and so forth. Uh, there are men who are teachers and yet they are pastors. They, are both, they do both well, equally well. Uh, some are evangelists in our world, and they are also pastors. And they can do both equally well. So they have a combination, they have a combination ministry. Now, we, we could go into that, you know, very profoundly. When you get to the apostle, then he has all five of the ministries. But there are many people that can do one thing. Now, now, Billy Graham is an evangelist. I mean, you don't, he doesn't have to call himself an evangelist. The fruit of his life is as an evangelist. Uh, but he is not a teacher. He still isn't. When, when he preaches today, your 10-year-old child could produce a message of the same abilities without any problem for the simple reason evangelism must always remain simple. I had a two-hour talk with Billy Graham, and he said, Lester, I want to tell you something. When I die, I'm going to still be preaching the same sermons I preached when I started as a teenager. Since the people out there are just as great a need today as they were when I started. They need to know the simple gospel of Jesus, and I am an evangelist. And uh, he, he told me some other stuff that I better not tell you. But, but uh, here's a man who knew his place in the body. He loved his place in the body. He's been effective. Nobody living would say that, <laughs> that Billy Graham's not an evangelist. And I don't know of anybody that would ever call him a pastor, God save us. But he has one gift. But there are others that have two and three gifts. And you get to the apostle, he has five of them that function through him. But you would never get an apostle to agree with that. You just couldn't get him to say, uh, I have all the ministers in the church. Immediately, he wouldn't have them. God would cut him down to size. So if you are a servant of the Lord, you serve the Lord with all your heart and with all the abilities that he puts within us. And we serve him humbly, that he is the one that does it and not us. Whatever we do, we do by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? So let God, we need so much in this generation to know what God has for us and how to use it, and how to appreciate it. I appreciate all of these ministers. Brother Hagin is a, is a prophet of God. I mean, I've been around him many times and I've observed that he's a prophet of God. He sure isn't a pastor. He tried that. And he's sure not an evangelist. He tried that too. But he, under the anointing of God, can prophesy truth that's astounding, you know. And so we, we identify with him with his fruits. And we thank God for the fruits of a, of a dedicated ministry. Can you say amen? amen. And I, I'm so glad that the, uh, the other gifts to the church, like deacons and so forth, are that they are in the body. And we will be dealing with those <clears throat> possibly 
in our next class, we'll be dealing with those. And you that are on television, be sure and get the, the teaching syllabus. And uh, you that are here that don't have one, please don't leave without it, because this is what makes you know what the body of Christ is all about. Most laity, they don't have any idea what the body of Christ is all about. And God wants us to know what all the body of Christ is about. Can you say amen? amen. And we must respect every part of the body. I would say we have to love every part of the body. Can you say amen? amen. I can tell you now, I highly esteem every part of the body. Give the Lord a hand, everybody.